नमसे समंडलपतिशनि सदा तो छब भूत्वादीन गणेश कौकर्णया कोपी न कंथाश्रित गोपी भावर सामृताभिलहरी कल्लोलमग्नोन्मो बंदे रूप सनातन रघुजग सीजीब गोपाल को Hare Krishna, glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to the Sankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Today we have a special event from <clears throat> Sacramento, California, <clears throat> being hosted by uh, Bhaktar Ram Singh <clears throat> with a special guest uh, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, who will be speaking on the glories of Rupa Goswami. So we're looking forward very much to that. <clears throat> and our program is to educate. This is the work of the Hare Krishna Society and the Prabhupada Disciples Association is to convey transcendental truth to others. And this is something that is absolutely necessary for all people who are aspiring to uh, make advancement in spiritual life. So we are reading from, uh, and we'll start the program with a reading from the Prabhupada Diaries, a, the initial beginning, the journal in 1966. So if you could go to the front page there, please, for us. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here is the journal, the beginning. 1966, New York Journal, His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Acharya means one who teaches by example, who Prabhupada taught by example through his personal practice of the process of devotional service. <clears throat> and then we go to the first upper side, chapter one, the upper side, west side, January 9th, through March 31st, 1966. So it's quite a while ago. Seems just like yesterday for all of us, eh, Yashoda Prabhu? Not long ago. Here we are already 2024. And time is marching, and we're trying to use our time as best as possible. Like Prabhupada used his time extremely effectively. Uh, someone was asking me yesterday, uh, how did Prabhupada take care of himself? Well, Prabhupada took care of himself, but <clears throat> carefully, but at the same time, he was a diabetic. He had health issues, and at the same time, he worked at a very high pace. He only slept a few hours a night. He was constantly traveling, so he just worked and worked and served and served right up to the last minute of his life. So Prabhupada was extremely focused. So we're hoping all of our members, you know, follow in the footsteps of Srila Prabhupada and stay focused on the process of bhakti yoga under his guidance and direction. So we're going to read <clears throat> the Upper West Side Summary on January 19th. Hopefully we can get that a little closer, sorry. Yeah, thank you. On January 19th, when the first entry occurs, Srila Prabhupada is living in the rear rooms of the yoga studio of Dr. Ram Murti Mishra at Suite 501, 100 West 72nd Street on, on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Daily, Srila Prabhupada walked several blocks to Dr. Mishra's residential apartment at 33 Riverside to bathe and to cook his meals. So he had no 
facility to take care of himself. So he had to go a few blocks to, to, to bathe himself and to cook prasad him. In the evening, Srila Prabhupada holds classes for interested persons. Some of Dr. Mistress' students attend these classes. During the day, Srila Prabhupada is active in selling his books to bookstores. He writes to newspapers and radio stations and organizes occasional speaking engagements. He also writes to large charitable foundations like the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation. On the weekends, Srila Prabhupada joins Dr. Mishra on yoga retreats at the Ananda Ashram in Monroe in upstate New York. We'll find out that they, they were just using him for kirtan. But he wasn't really speaking at all. They were a Mayavadi group. Here he conducts kirtans, which the students appreciate. There, see? Srila Prabhupada is looking for a building to purchase as a Radha Krishna temple. He is hoping, he hopes this will be financed by Sri Padma, Padmapat uh, Singhania, a wealthy industrialist in Kanpur, India. Srila Prabhupada contacts the Salvation Army to arrange the transfer of funds from India to America. He also writes to his godbrothers in India to petition the president of India to sanction foreign exchange. This endeavor occupies Srila Prabhupada for almost five months. Whoa. On February 2nd, Srila Prabhupada purchases a tape recorder to record his classes kirtans and bhajans he plays he pays the equivalent of one month's rent on february 20th he completes tape recording the gita upanishad introduction years later this becomes the introduction to the bhagavad gita as it is srila Prabhupada tries to enlist the aid of charlotte Le, leblanc who's been attending his classes to edit his manuscript of the bhagavad gita she becomes reluctant when she learns that Srila Prabhupada's philosophy is opposed to monism. Mm. Wasn't easy, huh? Very difficult. Srila Prabhupada wants his own place, and on February 9th, he signs a lease with the manager of the same building to rent an office room. Again, no, there was no kitchen or um, washroom. On February 23rd, Srila Prabhupada forms the International Institution for God Consciousness and enrolls seven of the people who are attending his classes. One of these is Harvey Cohen, who introduces Srila Prabhupada to Paul Murray, another young man seeking spiritual knowledge. In March, Srila Prabhupada's room is burgled, burgled, burgled. His tape recorder, typewriter, and book bag are stolen. Unbelievably low-class people. Within days, Srila Prabhupada moves to a loft at 94 Bowery, which he shares with Paul Murray. We'll learn that he's a drug addict and very unstable. We're used to that. While he is, he is obligated to give a month's notice at his present location, he changes the venue of his classes on April 1st and travels downtown for each meeting. So we're going to move forward and continue this reading every day at the or every week uh, at the beginning of our classes to give you an insight into the real <clears throat> journey that Prabhupada was on and how he overcame all his obstacles, all of them, uh, by the mercy of his guru and Krishna. All oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. We're going to move forward now with the chanting of Jaya Radha Madhava and the class on Srimad Bhagavatam with His Grace, who is in Sacramento. He made it down through the mountains without in incident, thank God. And he's there. We're going to look forward to the, today's wonderful session. All oh, glories to Srila Prabhupada. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunna Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunna Bihari 
Sudanan, Brajana, Ranjana, Sudanan, Brajana, Ranjana, Jamuna, Tiro, Bana, Chadi, Jamuna Tira Bana Sadi Jamuna Tira Bana Sadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunya Diri Varadhari Gopi Jana Vallabha Diri Varadhari Jaya Muspaat Paramang Sabribhra Jagacha Jastakare Sri Smaadati Dhan Dishar Sri Gushami Gokvati Jaya Anandapodi Vushnamini Ki Jaya Nama Chaja Sri Haridas Thakur Ki Jaya Prem Chitaho Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nittana Nisi Advaita Varada Shivata Adi Bhavu Vakti Nini Jaya Sri Sri Radha Krishna Mok Vapna Sam Khandra Radha Khandra Giri Ojan Ki Jaya Vindavan Dham Ki Jaya Navadit Dham Ki Jaya Ganga Maa Ki Jamuna Mai Ki Jai, Guru Dwarka Dhan Ki Jai, Shavit Bhaktivind Ki Jai, All Glories to Jai Sambhaji, All Glories to Jai Sambhaji. Thank you very much. Om Namo Bhagavati Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya O oh my Lord, Sri Krishna, the son of Vasudeva, the all-pervading personality of Godhead, I do offer my respectful obeisances unto you from Srimad Bhagavatam 111. Narayanam Namaskritya. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Cheva Narottamam. Naram Cheva Narottamam. Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Mudirayet Tato Jayam Mudirayet 
one should utter the means of conquest, Srimad Bhagavatam, after offering respectful obeisances, one, to the personality of God at Narayana, two, to the Naranarayana Rishi, who is the supermost human being, three, to the Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, then four, to Srila Vyasadev, the author. Welcome everyone to this reading and discussion on Srimad Bhagavatam. As indicated, we are recording this session from Sacramento, California, at the ashram of Bhaktaram Prabhu. He has beautiful deities of Gornitai and Srila Prabhupada. So we will be continuing this reading as we do every week. We will be reading a few verses from Canto 1, Chapter 2, dealing with the importance of this great transcendental literature, Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 1, Chapter 2, text number 17. Srinvatam Svakata Krishnaha Punyasravana Kirtanaha Ridyantasto Ihabadrani Vidhunoti Surit Satam Sri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is also the Paramatma in everyone's heart and the benefactor of the truthful devotee thus cleanse the desire for material enjoyment in the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge for hearing his Krishna's messages, which are themselves virtuous when properly heard and chanted. From Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 17. Text 18. Nashta Prayeshabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki By regular attendance in the Bhagavatam class or rendering service unto the pure devotees, all that is inauspicious in the heart of a candidate becomes destroyed almost to nil and thus Loving service unto the personality of Godhead who is praised with transcendental songs comes into being an irrevocable fact. Text number 19. Tadara jastamo baba kamalo bhadayaschaye chetayeteranabiddam Sitam Satve Prasidati. As soon as irrevocable loving service is fixed up in one's heart, at that time the effects of the nature's mode of passion and ignorance, such as lust, desire and hankerings, etc., do disappear from one's heart, and he becomes fixed up in the mode of goodness, which makes him completely happy. Text number 20. Evam prasanna manasu bhagavad bhakti yogataha bhagavad tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayate. Thus, when one is positively fixed up in the mode of unalloyed goodness, the enlivened minded man affected by contact of devotional service of the Lord can positively know scientific knowledge of the personality of God in, in the stage of liberation from all material association. Vidyati ridaya grantis chidyanti sarvasamshayaha kshiyante chasya karmani Drishtaevatmanishwari, the knot of one's heart is thus pierced and all misgivings are cut into pieces. The chain of fruitive actions are terminated along with the seeing of oneself, the dominating factor. 
Again, welcome everyone to this reading and discussion on Srimad Bhagavatam. Today we will be reading from Canto 1, Chapter 4, text number 12, all English synonyms, translations and purports by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, also known as the Krishna Consciousness Movement. Text number 12. Shivaya Lukasya Bhavaya Bhutaye Yavuttama Shloka Parayana Janaha Jivanti Natmartam Parashrayam Mumosha Nirvidya Kutakkalevaram Shivaya Welfare Lokasya of all living beings Bhavaya for flourishing Bhutaye for the matter of economic development. Ya one who is Uttama Shloka Parayana devoted to, devoted to the cause of the personality of Godhead. Janaha men Jivanti do live na but not Atmartam selfish interest. Parashrayam, shelter for others. Mumocha, gave up. Nirvidya, being freed from all attachments. Kutoho, for what reason? Kalivaram, mortal body. Those who are devoted to the cause of the personality of Godhead live only for the welfare, development, and happiness of others. They do not live for any selfish interest. So even though the emperor was free from all attachment for worldly possession, how could he give up his mortal body, which was the shelter for all others? Purport by Srila Prabhupada. Parikshit Maharaj was an ideal king and householder because he was devotee of the personality of Godhead. A devotee of the Lord has automatically all the good qualifications desirable. And the emperor was a typical example for this. Personally, he had no attachment for all worldly opulences in his possession. But as he was, as he was king for the all-around welfare of the citizens, he was always busy in the welfare work of the public, not only for, his, for this life, but also for the next. He would not allow to maintain slaughterhouse of killing cow and thus satisfy the citizens. He was not a foolish and partial administrator so that he would arrange for the protection of a class of living being and he would allow the other section to be killed. Because he was the devotee of the Lord, he knew perfectly well how to conduct the administration for everyone's happiness, both men, animal, plants, and all living creatures. He was not selfishly interested. Selfishness is displayed either self-centered or self-extended. He was neither of them. His interest was to please the supreme truth, personality of Godhead. The king is the representative of the supreme Lord, and as such, the king's interest must be identical with that of the supreme Lord. The supreme Lord wants that all living beings should be obedient to the Lord and thereby become happy. Therefore, the king's interest is to guide all subjects back to the kingdom of God. And hence, the activities of the citizen shall be so coordinated that they can at the end go back to home, back to Godhead. <laughs> Under the administration of such representative king, the kingdom is full of opulence, 
At that time, the human being need not to take the animal food. There is ample food grains, <coughs> milk, fruit, and vegetables, so that the human being, as well as the animal, can all take sumptuously and to their heart's content. All the living beings satisfied in the matter of food and shelter and conducted in terms of the prescribed rules there, there cannot be any disturbance between one living being with another. Emperor Parikshit was such a worthy king and therefore all were happy during his reign. O Magyana Timirandasya Jnanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasme Sri Gurave Namaha I offer my respectful obeisances unto my spiritual master who has opened my eyes which were blinded by the darkness of ignorance with the torchlight of knowledge. Namaom Vishnupadaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamin Nitinamine I offer my respectful obeisances unto His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, who is very dear to Lord Krishna, having taken shelter at His lotus feet. Namaste Saraswati Devi, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunyavadi, Pashatyadeshatarine. Our respectful obeisances are unto you, O spiritual master, servant of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami. You are kindly preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Deva and delivering the Western countries which are filled with impersonalism and voidism. Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyaya Bhakti Vedanta Namine Prasannaya Prashantaya Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Let me offer my obeisances unto my Guru Maharaja who is a disciple of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who is always calm and joyful, and who bears the name Bhaktivedanta. Bhagavad Vandanam Kadyam Guru Vandana Purvakam Kshiram Sharkara Yuktam Kadatehi Visheshataha Worship of the Supreme Lord is naturally very sweet, just like milk is originally sweet. Just as milk becomes sweeter by adding a little sugar, in the same way, worship of the Supreme Lord becomes sweeter by first worshiping the bona fide Guru. Adadhanastrinam danter idam yachi punaha punaha Srimad Rupa Padam Bhoja Dhulishyam Janma Janmani Clasping a straw between my teeth, I repeatedly beg to attain the dust of the lotus feet of Srimad Rupa Goswami, bird after bird. Amsho Bhagavatu Smyaham Sadadaso Asmi Saravata Tat kripa piksha konityam, tat prishta shat I am a tiny part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, and I am always in every way his eternal servant. As I am always hoping for his mercy and kindness, I offer myself to his most dear servitor, my spiritual master. Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adhuvena Dhadara Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare 
this verse of Srimas Bhagavatam has many very interesting points here. It is described that those who are devoted to the cause of the personality of Godhead live only for the welfare, development, and happiness of others. They do not live for any selfish interests. So this is quite significant. Just like every class Vishwakarma Prabhu is reading from the diary of Srila Prabhupada. Now, what are we learning from this diary? Because the question has been raised, well, why are we spending so much time with this diary? Because this is very important to understand the activities and the mindset of a pure devotee of Krishna, of one who is completely devoted to the mission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, like Srila Prabhupada. We were reading today how Srila Prabhupada was a guest with Dr. Mishra's ashram, but they were very restrictive in terms of allowing him to speak. And even some person who was trying to help Srila Prabhupada was objecting to Srila Prabhupada's preaching. Because Pr Prabhupada, being a pure Vaishnava, is preaching Vaishnava philosophy, <coughs> which is basically surrender and service to the Supreme Personality of God at Krishna. So we see all the sacrifices that Prabhupada made to bring the Krishna consciousness movement and to explain Krishna consciousness, to produce his books. At one point, some low-class person even stole Prabhupada's typewriter and Prabhupada's work. Prabhupada was unfazed. He was not disturbed. We were just discussing with Bhakti Ram. He made a comment how Prabhupada was totally transcendental. Although his possessions had been stolen because he was doing his books with that typewriter, he did not complain. He did not get upset. He did not become angry. He just totally relied on Krishna. And the, some other arrangement came about. Now, this is very important to study the level of sacrifice that Prabhupada made. This is not an ordinary human being. This is an empowered Acharya who is so fixed up in his service to Krishna that the greatest calamity would not disturb him. We see in the Bhagavad Gita, there is description that one and one is fixed up in the absolute truth. One will not be disturbed even in the greatest of disturbances. The greatest of calamities, one will not be disturbed. We personally have seen Srila Prabhupada when he was trying to get the land for the property in Bombay in Juhu to establish a temple. The owner of the property, Mr. Nair, had also entered into another contract with another person, trying to cheat Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, when he heard this, was not very happy that somebody was trying to cheat him of Krishna's money. So at one point, we were in Prabhupada's room, and Prabhupada heard that Mr. Nair had died. And Prabhupada said, yes, I was praying for Lord Nishingadev to kill him. And Prabhupada said, but generally we don't pray to Krishna to kill anyone. That is not the general standard. We pray to Krishna to engage in this service. But in this case, because this person was trying to cheat, I prayed to Nishingadev. <laughs> We see, even from Prabhupada's travel on the Jaladuta, how he sustained two heart attacks, came to America with no assurance 
when he came off the boat, there's a story that is related that Srila Prabhupada didn't have enough money. And he requested the captain of the ship, of the Jaladuta, Mr. Pandya, to take to buy a set of his books. And Mr. Pandya very kindly gave Prabhupada $20 for a set of his books. Prabhupada did not have financial support. He did not have institutional support. Just a, a letter from a friend in India whose son was living in Butler, Pennsylvania, that they would put him up for a month with no assurance of what would happen after a month. But Prabhupada very faithfully carried on. Very, very steadily carried on. No disturbance. He was not upset at anything. Very, very interesting. There is a story that was related to me by the late Shavanaswami, who was a disciple of Prabhupada. He was the first person that Prabhupada met when the boat was pulling in Boston. When the Jaladuta was putting in Boston, this devotee at that time was working for the Coast Guard. And he saw Prabhupada on the boat and he waved at Prabhupada. Prabhupada waved back at him. And later on, some way or other, he became a devotee. He accepted Prabhupada as his spiritual master. So we never know. He, even the slight association with a pure devotee can give the greatest benefit. Last Wednesday, we were discussing how in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, there's a very important verse which describes what is the benefit of association with sadhus, with devotees? Because people will say, well, why should I bother to come to class? Why should I bother to hear the Bhagavatam? Why should I bother to chant Hare Krishna, follow Ekadasi, so many austerities? So the Chaitanya Charitamrita very nicely answers that. And this relates to the story of the devotee who just for a second was waving at Prabhupada from the Prabhupada was on the boat and Prabhupada waved back at him. So the Chaitanya Charitamrita describes Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi, that all the scriptures are recommending the association of sadhus or saintly persons, devotees of Krishna. So the next question may come up well, why is that? What benefit will I get? from associating with sadhus? What gain will I obtain by associating with sadhus? Lava matra sadhu sange sarva siddhi hoy. That even for a very short moment, if one gets the association, oh dear, the text is right here. Thank you, Venkat Prabhu. It says the verdict of all revealed scriptures is that by even a moment's association with a pure devotee, one can attain all success. Prabhupada explains in the purport, according to astronomical calculations, lava is one eleventh of a second. Now somebody may raise the question, well, that's not a whole length of time, but that is the power of association with a sadhu, with a pure sadhu with no personal motivation. Just like that devotee, he didn't get the chance to sit with Prabhupada or to, to spend all different kinds of talk. He just waved at Prabhupada. And Prabhupada on the boat just waved back at him. And he was so fascinated by this. Here's another important text. The value of a moment's association with a devotee of the Lord cannot be compared to the attainment of heavenly planets or liberation from matter. And what to speak of worldly benedictions in the form of material prosperity, which is for those who are meant for death. Purport. This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 118.13. This verse concerned the Vedic rites and sacrifices performed by the great sages of Nanisharanya 
headed by Shona Karishi. The sages pointed out that association with the devotee for even less than a second is beyond comparison to a thousand Vedic rituals and sacrifices, elevation to heavenly planets, or merging into the existence of the Supreme. Now, this is very important because we have seen in many of us in our personal lives of persons who just read a page from Prabhupada's books or got in touch with Prabhupada or personally experienced the Prabhupada of how much power there is. Personally, I first saw Srila Prabhupada in 1967 during the summer in Montreal, Canada. The Indian government had a pavilion in which they had different exhibits and they had Srila Prabhupada doing a kirtan with his disciples, they were chanting. So I was an underage minor, 15 or 16. And basically I went and I was watching the kirtan. And at one point Prabhupada just glanced at me, must have been for half a second, one eleventh of a second. And there was this, this piercing glance. Basically it felt like you've come to the right place. Just listen. So I was listening to the kirtan and it was so moving, so powerful. I did not quite understand what it was. It just felt so transcendental. And then what happens, my parents yanked me away. So I escaped again and came back to listen to the kirtan. And I was just fascinated how Prabhupada was chanting and so many people were gathering, looking at Prabhupada and listening to the chant. It was like a magnet. The power of that pure devotee was like a magnet. <coughs> what happened is the next week in the local newspaper in Quebec City, there was a, a teacher. Every week they would put a section of the newspaper on Sunday, different, different social articles about social events and music and dance and sports. And they had a big picture of Srila Prabhupada that on that chanting in Montreal in color. So I took the picture out and put it on my wall. At that time, I was doing some so-called Hatha Yoga and I had different pictures of different sadhus. I even had a picture of Lord Chaitanya and I didn't even know who he was. It's just a picture that I found in an old book and he was dancing, chanting. And I say, yeah, this looks cool. Let's put it on the wall. So, I, but the picture of Srila Prabhupada was there and every day when I would practice my yoga, I would offer a little incense, but I remembered that glance from Srila Prabhupada, that fleeting glance. It was not even three seconds, very little. Just like that devotee, Shayavana Swami, who experienced that association with Srila Prabhupada, it is very, very powerful. But it was not until I read Prabhupada's Bhagavad Gita, the first Bhagavad Gita was published in 1968. That was the purple cover with the picture of Lord Vishnu. And even then, there was so many brilliant, clear, crystal clear explanations. What is the soul? The difference between the soul and the body. What happens after death? Who is God? What happens at, in the material world when you die? Why are there suffering? Why some living entities are enjoying them? There's so many clear explanations. That is the power of the words of a pure devotee. Srila Prabhupada was super empowered by Lord Chaitanya that despite all the obstacles, I mean, you think of it, two heart attacks on the Jaladuta in 1967 in New York, another heart attack, he went in, in to India for six months and then came back and then the movement started to explode everywhere. <coughs> Excuse me, a little cold. Everywhere Prabhupada went, people were directly affected by this pure devotee. And somebody may say, well, you had the chance to personally, physically see him but we didn't get that chance. Well, it's irrelevant. Whether you personally saw him, if you get in touch with his words, with his writings, 
with his purports, with his books, it is the same. Just the other day we were discussing about the power of Srimad Bhagavatam. In the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, it is explained by the sages of Naimisharanya that the Srimad Bhagavatam is the direct manifestation of Krishna. Krishna is directly present in the verses and the writings of Srimad Bhagavatam. Similarly, the pure devotee Srila Prabhupada is directly present in his words and in his purports. And anyone can read these books, apply the philosophy, just like this morning we had a nice program. Bhakta Ram and one Mataji named Purnima Devi Dasi. We had a nice Mangalartik. We had a beautiful offering to Gornitai and Krishna Kaliya. And this is, this is the program that Prabhupada gave for all of his followers, students, and disciples. Simple. We chanted. We chanted the Maha Mantra, glorified Srila Prabhupada, offered some flowers to Prabhupada, Gornitai, and Krishna. And now we're all assembled together, thanks to this modern technology and the nice work of Venkata Bhatta Prabhu and Bhakti Ram, we're able to communicate. But what are we together for? For this Sadhu Sangha, to hear the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. This is very important. There was a, a, a nice YouTube video recently that a devotee sent me. And Prabhupada was commenting, he says, don't worry at the time of death. Krishna will remember everything you did. All the service you did, Krishna remembers. Prabhupada said, it is already recorded. It is already recorded. That is why we see in the Bhagavatam, Tasmad Bharata Sarvatma Bhagavan Ishwaru Harihi Shrutadhyaha Kirtita Vyascha Smarta Vyascha Itchata Abhayam. There is the story of King Katvanga. King Katvanga was a very powerful king who was fighting for the demigods. And at the end of his fighting, he, he requested, well, give me a benediction. And the demigod says, what do you want? He says, how long do I have to live? He says, very short. Very short. You will die very soon. So the verse in the Bhagavatam, it says, just take shelter of hearing, chanting, and remembering the name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the greatest gift that Srila Prabhupada has given, the chanting of the Maha Mantra. Just like we hear from great acharyas like Narottam Das Thakur, Golokera Premadhana Harinama Samkirtana, that this chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. <coughs> Where does it come from? Narottam Das Thakur explains, Golokera Premadana. This comes from the spiritual world, from Krishna's own planet. This Nam Samkirtana is the greatest benediction for this age. We've often discussed another verse that Prabhupada often quoted from the Kali Santarana Upanishad about the history of this Maha Mantra. It's a conversation between Lord Brahma and his son Narada Muni where Narada Muni was asking Lord Brahma, well, how will living entities be delivered in the age of Kali Yuga? And Lord Brahma is explaining by this Maha Mantra, the great chant for deliverance. Iti shodasakam nam nam kali kalmasa nasanam na tapparata rupeyaha sarvavede shudrishyate 7.51 that these 16 words of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, this is the essence of all the Vedas. There is no higher means of self-realization than this chanting. And this is the verdict, Sarva Vedishu Drishyati. This is the verdict of all the Vedas. <coughs> because somebody may say, 
Well, there are so many different recommendations, even in Vedas, doing sacrifice, giving in charity, building tanks, building water ponds, giving food to the poor, so many different, doing different kinds of sacrifices, so many different performing austerities, visiting places of pilgrimage. But this chanting is, in, includes all of that. This is the verdict of all the Vedas, that one should simply apply himself to chant. Now, if somebody says, well, you know, I, I, yes, sir, I really have to work. I got a family. I got responsibility, a job or business. Well, that's okay. No one is telling you not to work. But use this modern technology to your advantage. It's like nowadays there is this YouTube and so many different channels that you, you can listen to proper chanting, giving a Bhagavatam class, proper chanting japa. So many songs are there. Just like in the beginning of this program, Venkat Bhatta Prabhu is playing that song the, to the six Goswamis. The Sat Goswami Astakam. This was written by Srinivas Acharya, one of the associates of Srila Jiva Goswami. And it's a beautiful explanation of the philosophy of Lord Chaitanya and who are the six Goswamis. Because today is a very special day. It is the disappearance day of Srila Jiva Goswami Prabhupada, one of the foremost acharyas in our Sampradaya, who is the direct follower and student of Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami. He has written very detailed, very detailed analysis of all the Shastras with his Sat Sandarbhas and so many other books. Very important. Prabhupada many times quotes Jiva Goswami. As a matter of fact, in one of Prabhupada's books, Prabhupada explains that any time that there is any kind of sacrificial performance or ritualistic performance, it should always begin with the chanting of the name of Krishna and end with the name of Krishna. This is the power of the name of Krishna. It is very, very sweet. It is very transcendental and very beneficial. Anyone can benefit. Whether or not one physically met Prabhupada or not is not the criteria. Krishna is always present in his name. Many times in Prabhupada's book, many places, Prabhupada quoted from the Padma Purana explaining, Abhinatvam Nama Naminaha. Nama means the name of Krishna. Nami means the person Krishna. That there is no difference between the person Krishna and the name of Krishna. That is the power. And that is the prerogative of the pure devotee like Srila Prabhupada. Krishna se tomar, Krishna de pepar, tomar shakatiyache. He is so absorbed at the lotus feet of Krishna that he can give Krishna to anyone. Anyone who wants to hear, he will give Krishna. So it is our good fortune that some way or other we have come in contact with a great powerful personality lecture like of Prabhupada, the ambassador of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the foremost preacher of Krishna consciousness in the world. In the beginning in 1972 in the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada, there was a nice caption where Prabhupada said, the greatest exponent of Krishna consciousness in the Western world. Well, that is true, but actually he was the greatest exponent of Krishna consciousness in the whole world, in the whole universe. Simply what we have to do is follow his teachings, follow his instructions, and trying to distribute his instruction and his mercy to everyone with his transcendental books. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Yashoda Nandana Prabhu, for that wonderful explanation of Krishna consciousness based on today's verses. And I wanted to say that uh, it's interesting to note, uh, it is interesting to note that uh, your encounter with Prabhupada was also uh, a reflection of your past life. Because somehow or other, we all have a past life of piety, 
And we also have a past life of, <clears throat> excuse me, we also have a past life of opportunity. On this path, there is no loss or diminution. And it is a progressive path. So I think all of us, for some reason or other, when we come in contact with Krishna, we're drawn to Krishna's service through the pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada. It was our destiny to do this. It's interesting to note that Yashoda was mentioning Vijaya Pandit that he had a picture of Lord Chaitanya in his collection at his house. He didn't even know who Lord Chaitanya was, but he had it there. And there's a reason why, because it was something that he had done in the past. This is not, nothing here, everyone, is by chance or accident. We're here for a specific reason. Some people may accept it, some people don't. But the fact of the matter is, Krishna is aware of everything. So thank you, Yashoda Prabhu, for becoming a devotee and taking up the path of Krishna consciousness and still active at in the year 2024, very active and preaching Krishna consciousness with intensity, following in the footsteps of Prabhupada. I wanted to go back to the verse here just briefly <clears throat> and in the purport. Uh, just at the purport, but as he was king for all around welfare of citizens, he was always always busy in the welfare work of the public, not only for his life, but also for the next. So, so there you are. He would not allow to maintain slaughterhouse of killing cow and thus satisfy the citizens. He was not a foolish and partial administrator so that he would arrange for protection of a class of living beings and would allow the other section to be killed because he was a devotee of the Lord. He knew perfectly well how to conduct the administration for everyone's happiness, both men, animal, plants, and all living cre creatures. He was not selfishly interested. So <clears throat> this is, Prabhupada introduced this concept for us. Protection of all living beings is the responsibility of every person. This is the standard of human form of life that we weren't aware of. In this modern society, most people <clears throat> have a conception, do not have a conception of this principle. Even though in the Bible it is said, thou shalt not kill. But all these major holidays here in the West <clears throat> are all about killing animals and consuming them as part of the... Con celebration. This is the way of hogs and dogs who eat anything. This is called malecha in our philosophy. Um, dog eater or lower than a dog eater. How can anyone understand Krishna with this kind of behavior? Not possible. We can get along with all the animals and birds as demonstrated by a recent uh, video I saw on Facebook of a small boy uh, somewhere on a farm. So <laughs> it's interesting, Yashoda Prabhu. This little boy, he's about six or seven, he has an electric car, you know, one of those battery-operated little tractors. And he has <clears throat> a series of cars behind it. And on the cars, he has a, a group of animals, birds, that he carts around his farm. Now, the first one is a rooster. A rooster. Oh, yeah. And he sleeps with the rooster, by the way. So his father takes a picture of him with the rooster. Now, the rooster is very much in love with this boy. Very focused. In fact, when they start off, the rooster will croak. Oh, 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 oh. Cock-a-doodle-doo. And then off the train goes with him pulling these animals around. And they're all friends. None of them, by the way, jump out of the cars. He has rabbits. He has pigeons. He has a big duck that follows him along. Then he has the goats, you know, around, swirling around, and the dogs swirling around his train as he moves down the pathway at his farm. 
It's incredible. And I'm looking at this. I'm going, this person is demonstrating how all living beings can get along. For example, when they have a celebration here in the West, they kill turkeys at Thanksgiving. Well, here, this young man is demonstrating that this turkey is very conscious of who he is. They actually look at each other eye to eye, and they have a wonderful friendship and trust. He picks his, tur his turkey up, and he walks around with it and pets it, and then puts it down and picks up a rabbit and walks around with it. And all the animals, along with him, are living in cooperation. So Srila Prabhupada explains killing and eating them comes comes with a very serious realize that everything carries this action and reaction system. Kill or be killed, that's the message. Kill and be killed, I should say. By Prabhupada's mercy, we have learned how to eat and offer our food to Krishna and have it become prashadam, because prashadam is antiseptic and prophylactic. It's not that we're vegetarians or vegans. We're Krishnatarians. We offer our food to Krishna, and we distribute pr prashadam to other people. That's also very important, not just to eat yourself. That's not Krishna conscious. You cook for others. In fact, you should go to your front door and call out, according to the Vedic teachings, is there any hungry man in the neighborhood? Please come and have prashadam. So <clears throat> prashadam has two characteristics that we should understand. I'll finish up in a minute. Prophylactic and antiseptic. It's a prophylactic, it's preventative. It prevents you from committing sinful activities and it purifies you of past sinful activities. I know here at this ashram, I've had a series of people coming here, <coughs> either working or living here. And over that period of time in the last two years, we've had three people. You know, we had, I had a fellow living in the living room and he was in cancer. <clears throat> Did he make much advancement? Well, I'd come into his room during the day. I'd talk to him briefly about Krishna. I'd encourage him to read the Gita. And then he'd, I'd invite him for prasadam in the kitchen, in the, in the breakfast room. And he'd come in, he'd have his, but he loved the dal and rice, and it was a very great thing. And then he left eventually, he went to a hospital called Princess Margaret in Toronto, and he passed away. Hmm. Sad. But at the same time, Alex got the benefit by the mercy of Prabhupada through his disciples, because we are also ambassadors of Krishna consciousness. We're not uh, a use, we, we have, we're not very advanced, but at least we can function, Vijaya Pandit, as ambassadors to Srila Prabhupada's message and help other people take up this process of Krishna consciousness. That's our responsibility. And give them prashadam. We had this friend Richard. He was also coming. All of a sudden, I got a message a few months ago from Bhakta Mark. It was one of uh, uh, Mark's best friends, Richard. He passed away in his apartment. Goodbye. So <clears throat> death can come at any moment. And if we can become an ambassador of Krishna consciousness on behalf of our spiritual master and present Prabhupada as guru, Diksha and Siksha guru properly and give people an introduction into this process without any motivation, then Krishna will bless you. That is Krishna consciousness. And one has to practice this at every moment in his life. You showed Anandana Prabhu, if you could explain further the mar mercy of the pure devotee. There's an interesting story. In 1975, there was a very wealthy man in Hyderabad, Andhra Pradesh, India. That's a central province in South India. Mm -hmm. 
he had donated some land for the temple in Hyderabad for the construction of a Krishna temple. So he invited Srila Prabhupada and his disciples to come take prasadam at his house. And he invited all of his relatives and important dignitaries and everything. Now in Andhra Pradesh, they cook very different than in North India. In North India, they cook with a lot of puris and chapatis and kachoris and pakoras and you know, especially the Marwaris and Gujarati is very opulent cooking. In South India, it's mostly rice. But in Andhra Pradesh, some of the higher class people, they start a meal with a big, huge ladu. If anybody is familiar with the Tirupati or Tirumalai temple, they have these gigantic ladus that are the side of a grapefruit. It's massive. If you take, if you eat one of these ladus, literally you're going to be filled for five, six, seven hours, and it's got everything in it: cashews, almonds, bundies, <clears throat> saffron. It's it's like a meal packed up. It's semi sweet, and they have this very unique recipe. So this person is inviting Prabhupada, and the first thing they did is put this gigantic, gigantic ladu like the size of a pomelo or a big, large grapefruit. And devotees, because most of us, when we had gone to life members, they were North Indians. Mm -hmm. It will start with rice and dal and chapatis and vegetables, not with a massive, big, massive ladus. Because some of them, and anybody who's familiar with the pomelo, it's like a gigantic, huge grapefruit. And devotees were looking at this you know, this banana leaf with this big ladu and looking at Prabhupada. <laughs> what are we supposed to do with this? And Prabhupada is breaking the ladu and he's eating it. And Prabhupada says, eat it. That's how they do over here. Mm -hmm. And Prabhupada was surprised that the devotees were hesitating. Prabhupada says, I'm eating, so you can eat. It's nice prasadam. So it was just very interesting to see Prabhupada Prabhupada knew how to accommodate his guests. I was once told another Prashadam story, how Prabhupada in, uh, was invited by a North Indian gentleman, either a Punjabi or somebody from Haryana, and they had cooked a big feast for Prabhupada. And Prabhupada's servant was taking Prashadam before, just besides Prabhupada. And he, this devotee pulled out a piece of onion out of the doll and showed it to Prabhupada. Prabhupada told him, shut up. You just eat what's there, and because otherwise they will feel very insulted with your behavior. Just take it. There will be no reaction. Just take it. Of course, it's not that Prabhupada was giving a license to eat that kind of food stuff, but Prabhupada was very conscious of reciprocation with his guests. I've seen many times, been with Prabhupada, taking prasadam with some Indian guests. He was very sensitive. Another time in Calcutta, this very rich Bengali lady had been invited proper with all the devotees, and they had cooked this elaborate feast, just like all these different preparations you see in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. They were cooking everything. And this was just amazing. And at one point, Prabhupada, they brought some nice rasgulas. So Prabhupada took the rasgulla, he squeezed the juice out of it, he popped it in the air, and it went directly into his mouth. Of course, the devotees tried to imitate him, and the, the rasgullas felt on their shoulders, felt on their nose, felt on their... Prabhupada says, you cannot do that. You cannot imitate. Just put it in your mouth. So that's that's a few Prashadam stories. Hare Krishna. Excellent. Fantastic. Well, we have quite a few of, of Prabhupada's mercy in terms of uh, uh, getting the remnants of Srila Prabhupada uh, personally. And I know that you've had that opportunity as well. It's called Orts, or the remnants of the pure devotee. <clears throat> and uh, it is also known as Maha Maha Prashadam. And this means that it is the one of the greatest blessings that a person can have uh, to get this remnants of spiritual food and make advancement. So again, <clears throat> we're not vegan, we're not vegetarian, we're Krishna 
Krishnatarians. We offer our food to Krishna through Prabhupada's instructions. And in this way, this food becomes prasadam. You have it for yourself and cook enough and distribute it to others every day of your life. That's the business of a devotee. And we have Dharma Bhavana with us, I see, from Dallas, Texas. Maybe you could share some insights this morning on these comments. Oh, Hare Krishna, thank you. Yeah, I was uh, all along uh, today's class is very inspirational. And I'm, I'm thinking how um, our classes are very philosophical, they're directly from Srimad Bhagavatam. <clears throat> But if all the devotees and members can become so inspired to think, oh, wow, I want to be a devotee. I want to learn how to share all these different stories and Krishna consciousness for the rest of my life. That seems to be a, a really important thing, this aspect of inspiration. Now, I thought today's class was particularly inspiring. And for those who we, we heard about Shara Prabhupada's uh, uh, complications, the theft and so many different um lack of facilities and we can also use that in our life because we're going to have so many you know problems and inconveniences and family and business troubles and and on and on so that's also inspirational that we, we can see by example we don't have to become too discouraged if something doesn't go our way because practically material nature is uh so situated that, that things aren't going to go to our advantage all the time so those are just some of the notes i made today uh, and, and, and along the whole thing, if we can just simply uh, avoid offending devotees, then our pathway back to Godhead will become um, without too much trouble. If, if we learn how to treat the devotees, love the devotees, even if we don't like someone, um, then everything will be all right. We just learn how to uh, learn to serve the devotees. So those are just a few thoughts I had today from the class. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yes, very well spoken. And the fact of the matter is that we can't please all of the people all of the time. But at the same, at the same time, we have to stay focused on our own spiritual practices. And in this way, we'll develop some strength of character. That's the idea. Um, we have John Espria in Hawaii. Maybe he could share his insights on today's verses, I hope his microphone is working. John Priya, aloha in Hawaii. Hare Krishna, Hare Bol, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. Wonderful nectar today. I'm drowning on this nectar <laughs> of Prabhupada Lila and Prasadam Lila. And, uh, and yeah, the, uh, a second association where pure devotee is enough to, to uh, ignite our fire of spiritual life. And uh, I remember first time I saw Srila Prabhupada in LA, he he, uh, he was getting out of the car on the back alley and they were showering flowers from the roof. So it was like a heavenly setup. And the door opened and Prabhupada came out and Prabhupada smiled. <clears throat> and if you ever got to see Prabhupada smile, it was like oceanic. And I just lost... I totally lost track of time and place. I was like, I didn't know what happened. I was just like, whoa. And Prabhupada usually would look at everybody. In LA, when Prabhupada gave class, everybody that attend one of Prabhupada's classes will tell you this, that during the class, at one point or another, Prabhupada would look onto each devotee in that room, right into your eyes. And when Prabhupada looked, I you, it was like piercing. You could tell that he could, you couldn't hide anything for it from him. He knew who you were, and it's amazing. And the feeling when Prabhupada looked at you was like electrifying. So this is Prabhupada's mercy upon us that that uh, he had he has so much mercy, so much mercy to give. All we have to do is take that first step, and accept Shila Prabhupada in our heart. And Prabhupada is right there, ready to 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 uh to help us. So we need to keep on asking the pure devotee. And so Prabhupada helps us so nicely by by giving us this wonderful tool called prasadam. And prasadam is the most amazing thing. 
um, simply by offering prasadam to an animal, these animals will take a human birth. So I used to run food for life for many years and sometimes we have some leftover of prasadam after many days we'll go bed and I always take it either to the ocean or a river or bury it on the dirt. And so whenever you feed animals prasad on their guard, feed this life. Imagine that you're a little fish and <laughs> you have billions of lifetimes to wait to come to human form to inquire who you are. And here's a little prasadam and the fish takes that prasadam and he's born a human given a chance. And this happens because we offer this food to Srila Prabhupada the way Prabhupada taught us, and Prabhupada offers it to his guru, and this goes straight back to Krishna. So, prasadam is the most amazing thing. And uh, I'm a prasadam uh, addict, like we all are. <laughs> and I love to feed people, just like Vishwa Karma. I love to cook and feed people every, every chance we get. We could distribute prasadam, and even if we don't cook, we could uh, buy a bag of sugar candy and offer it to Krishna and give this, what, whatever we go, we could give little candy to anybody. People will take anything wrapped. So, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, I love the animal story on the train. I was laughing so hard. Thank you for that one. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Well, the, the point is that Prabhupada understood the reality of karma and he was trying to help us uh, avoid these very sinful activities. And it is uh, of killing, killing animals for eating. Prabhupada refers to it as hogs and dogs because a hog or a dog will eat pretty much anything. So the human being, <clears throat> and many of them, eat anything. They have no discrimination. So Krishna consciousness, through transcendental knowledge, enlightens people on what to do and what not to do in order to avoid the calamity of taking birth in a lower species. This is a mystery, this philosophy. It is really a mystery, especially for the non-devotee. They look at you like a deer with headlights on. Huh? Excuse me? I don't have to eat hamburger? I shouldn't eat uh, chicken? This is a mad, mad, insane world we live in, everyone. There's only a few sane people. Prabhupada would tell us that. Everyone is crazy. This is a crazy world, but it is an opportunity for us in our own little place in this world. It's a Nam Hatha program we're presenting where each one of us becomes an ambassador. Prabhu Datadesha, in your particular area, I've been in this area for, uh, let me see, 23, uh, 50, 53 years in the same spot and struggling on to try to do something in a humble way to serve my guru. And so everyone in their own particular spot, whether you're in Italy or in Texas or Australia or Hawaii, do the best that you can to take this process. You showed a Prabhu. Maybe you could share some more insights for us. There's an interesting story that happened in Calcutta in the early 1970s where one disciple went to Prabhupada's room and asked Srila Prabhupada, Oh, Prabhupada, please give me your mercy. I am desirous of your mercy. Please give me your mercy. And Prabhupada said, No, you give me your mercy. Help me spread this movement. So basically, this was a nice instruction from Srila Prabhupada, that the mercy of the spiritual master is always available. Are we willing to do what it takes to get more mercy and to give that mercy to other persons? Very important point. I see that our friend Nilesh Prabhu is also has his hand up. 
Is he traveling? Yes, he's traveling always. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm, I'm just in the car. This is my sanctum sanctorium, so I'm away from all distractions. So anyway, um, uh, what I wanted to share was um, uh, is that the 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 new the new breed of uh, uh, people who are turning to veganism away from all kind of meat eating and and they see the perils of meat eating and they see the medical reasons they see the environmental reasons they see uh, other aspects like even when when we were in in Zurich uh, one of the oldest vegan restaurants uh, in Europe is over there which is dating back to i think 1970 or 18 18 uh, 18 uh, 19th century or something of that sort where they have been pu pushing this veganism uh, for a lot and these are i feel are the ideal uh, people who can easily be turned to Krishna consciousness, you see, uh, easily uh, attracted towards Krishna consciousness on this particular uh, philosophy. Because if you look at even scientific data, they say that plants can even hear us. Like, for example, we, we, we know the famous experiments which were done by Jagdish Chandra Bose on plants where both plants were given the same amount of light, same amount of uh, uh, water and one was subjected to a different kind of music like uh, rock music while the other plant was subjected to um, uh, Indian classical music and one plant grew towards the speaker while the other one grew away from the speaker. Now, those who are vegetarians, you know, like me when I was growing up, we were vegetarians. Uh, though we were Vaishnavas, nobody explained to me that, oh, we have to offer it to Krishna or whatever. So when I grew up, I started eating meat for a brief amount of time, thinking that no matter what I do, I'm going to kill life. Even if I kill life, uh, uh, you know, I used to justify it by saying is that if I were to slap uh, person A uh, and the person A did not respond much, while I slapped with the same amount of uh, violence uh, person B and the person B started wailing, that does not mean that person B got more hurt than person A. We base our judgment of evolution or person's pain from the response which we get from the stimulus which we give, which is wrong. And the modern scientific data has proven that even talking positively to the, uh, to the tree or the sapling will grow the sapling faster than giving negative thoughts. And these experiments have been done. So when people are aware of all these things and how life is equal in every jiva, then the embracing of Krishna conscious philosophy becomes easier. I would like your input on that, Yashodanandan Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Well, this is a very important point that you're raising because we see Prabhupada was always emphasizing the point like, just like it was mentioned by Vishwakarma Prabhu, we are not vegetarians or vegans, we are Krishnatarian. Because it's a much higher philosophical understanding to understand that all life is given by Krishna. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, Aham Bija Pradapita, I'm the seed giving father of all living entities. So no one has the right to take the life of another living entity. There is karma involved with everything. That's why we offer the food stuff to Krishna. Then the plant is benefited, the devotee is benefited, everyone is benefited. Because it, it already belongs to Krishna. So we offer it with love and devotion. Just like in the Mahabharata, there's the famous story of Vidura and Duryodhana. Duryodhana invited Krishna for a big, massive, lavish feast that he had cooked. And Krishna did not accept the feast of Duryodhana. But when Vidura offered Krishna a banana, Krishna, Vidura was so excited that he peeled the banana, he gave the peel to Krishna and the banana was tossed away. He was so excited and Krishna ate the peel. Why? Because there was devotion, there was love. So the point is that Prabhupada taught us to love all living entities, all plants, all living beings, not to unnecessarily kill animals. 
and to offer the food stuff with love and devotion. That's why all these great acharyas in our sampradaya, all sampradayas, they recommend to eat certain foods, certain foods like onions, garlic, and these. Many of these foods are not meant to be offered to Krishna. They're tamasic and rajasic. So that's why Prabhupada was very careful to teach the devotees that you prepare the food in a certain way, in a certain consciousness. Everything has to be very clean, offer it with love and devotion. And then all of the issue of karma is taken out. Because the karma is a very complicated. There's that story in the Bhagavatam, how a great rishi pierced an ant and he was condemned by Yamaraj to take the, you know, it's a, it, there is very severe reaction for everything. And there is so many activities in this world that people do that are very troublesome. Very troublesome. I mean, look at what's going on. People kill their children in the womb and they march. You see, they march for their rights, their abortion rights. Well, what about the right of that child in the womb? Does he not have rights? But because people are not educated, they don't understand next life, this life, what is the karma, what is the result of all these activities. Mm. This is a very dangerous situation. You see, there are so many wars and conflicts, so many conflicts. And Prophet explained during the Vietnam War, devotees asked Prophet, why is it that there's so much killing going on? There's this war. Prophet, because you kill the animals by the law of nature, so many people will be killed in these unnecessary wars and so many other calamities. Yes, you had another. Prabhuji, I wanted to, I wanted to ask a corollary to this because again, I heard in one of these uh, uh, YouTube shorts there is a Prabhupada Anuga group in Singapore uh, where this Prabhuji was talking about milk which we get from cows. Uh, we know that the, the cows are very ill-treated. They are injected with growth hormones, antibiotics. Then there are people who say, no, no, I will buy only organic milk where they are not treated with antibiotics. Um, I go to the point where, okay, we, we will buy even raw milk, not even homogenized milk, where uh, in Florida, at least, uh, there is a label which is given, not fit for human consumption. So it is raw milk, which is not processed at all, it is not even pasteurized. We get it home, we boil it, and then we make yogurt and paneer or whatever it is. But my uh, argument with my wife is always the same. She says that at the end of it all, the cow is still sent to the slaughterhouse. So now they have come up with another level, which is called ahimsa milk, where they don't send the cow out to the slaughterhouse after her lactation period is done. Now this Prabhu from Singapore says, whether she's sent to the slaughterhouse or not sent to slaughterhouse. If we were to take that milk and offer it to Krishna, as you said, that everybody profits. The cow profits, the man profits, the person who's consuming profits, uh, everybody profits. What is your position on this uh, subject with milk? Well, that devotee was correct. Let, let's take the example here. Those of us who are there, like Vishwakarma and Dharma Bhavana and, and or Janas Priya, that were there during Prabhupada's manifested presence, Prabhupada took milk that was bought from the market from cows that are just the same treatment then that they have now. And Prabhupada's explanation when this came up is that the cow gets benefit. All the living entities that are, that take that milk that is offered to Krishna gets benefit. In other words, there is no karma involved if that milk is offered to Krishna. And another thing about this vegan, as Vaishnavas, for example, in the the Krishna Astutara Satanama, there's 108 names of Lord Krishna from the Nada the Pancharatra. And some of Krishna's name, for example, one of Krishna's name is Makanchor. Krishna is steals butter. This is well known. So are we supposed to take that name out of that prayer because it doesn't conform to some somebody's idea of social justice? These devotees, I appreciate the sentiment, but it, there's a lot of deeper understanding of the law of karma here. Just like if you offer a flower, you take that flower from the bush, you offer it to Krishna, that tree becomes liberated. 
Prabhupada used to say, if an animal gets prasadam, they get benefited. So there is a lot of things they don't understand. The, the sentiment, the emotion is nice, but what we're going is a little deeper, that it should be offered to Krishna with love and devotion, and that will cure the, cure the problem. Because even if they say that these cows are mistreated, cows have always been mistreated, at least in Kali Yuga. That's how Kali Yuga began, with Maharaj Parikshit having the, the, the Shudra beating the cow. So the point is that these milk, it, it, you cannot achieve perfection with this sentiment. Because, for example, when you do a baiting ceremony of the deities, there's a, there's a point called Pancha Amrita, with cow, milk, yogurt, ghee, sugar, honey. Then there's Panchagavya, where you have the, the urine of the cow, the stool of the cow, milk, honey, and ghee. And this is recommended by the Acharyas, like Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Ramanuja, Madhva, they worship their deities. Because in Vedic culture, the cow is considered very sacred. So these persons do not have that depth of the knowledge. And what we can do is recommend to these people, we appreciate your sentiment, that's very nice. But even if the, the milk is bought from the market, if it is offered to Krishna, the cow will be benefited, the person who is offering will be benefited, and the person who will consume the prashan will be benefited. Hare Krishna. Hare Bo. Um Thank you very much, everyone. We're at 11.33 a.m. Uh, of this particular program. I thought it was an interesting point that Vinkat Bhatta wrote here. In my experience, vegans have a very hard time accepting that we eat milk and milk products as prasadam. That's an accurate statement because of their particular point of view, which is basically not a Krishna conscious point of view. It's their perception of things. It's good that they're trying to protect animals. We respect that. But again, as you said, Yashoda, this is a higher principle of Krishna Prashadam. Krishna, we are we offer our food first. If you you can eat all the vegan food you want, but if you don't offer it, there's still a sinful reaction for it. Everything, mm -hmm. every action has a sinful reaction to it, except Krishna Prashadam. So, um, <clears throat> Nilesh, I want to suggest keep going, preach to whoever you meet, whoever you see, explain this philosophy to them, and hopefully they'll take up Krishna consciousness if they're really sincere, if it's in their heart that. They are serious about spiritual life. Prabhupada said you have to be very serious about getting out of this material world. It is not for whimsical people that just make up things, concoct this and that. And what about Jersey cows versus the Sai cows? <laughs> Doesn't so, matter. All, all, yeah, all questions. Thank you, everyone. And uh, <clears throat> what is the plan now, Yashoda? Prabhu for, uh, for at 10 30 a.m this morning pacific's time which is yes. going to be in about uh, two hours uh we're going to have a kirtan we're going to read about Srila jiva goswami Prabhupada, and at about 11 40 we're going to have a, a mini special event to demonstrate how to offer the boga to become prachatam we're going to explain from Prabhupada's perspective how it should be offered. We're going to do an actual offering so we can demonstrate and record it so it can go into our site. There's already a Mataji cooking in the kitchen, very nicely cooking, and we're going to be offering. So everybody can try to join in at 1030. We're going to have a beautiful kirtan. We're going to read basically from the Chaitanya Charitamrita from Prabhupada describing the activities and life of Jiva Goswami. And around 11.35, 11.40, we're going to read a few passages from Prabhupada explaining how to offer the boga so that it becomes prasada, the authorized way according to Srila Prabhupada. Excellent. Vijaya Pandit, did you enjoy the program today? 
Yes. Are you feeling like ecstasy? I'm, ecstasy? You feel <laughs> some ecstasy? Always. Oh, Thank you. I feel some ecstasy with all of you. I can say something Germany about, Germany. about, what? about Rupesh, who is saying something, asking something. There is there is a there is a leader <laughs> of the Prabhupada when he came to Italy, 1974, and um, one evening he was asking some milk. So a, a disciple uh, told to Shila Prabhupada, but Shila Prabhupada, this milk uh, from the supermarket is not from from it's from the supermarket. It's Goshala. It's not from the Goshala. The milk. It's not coming from protected cow. And Prabhupada answer, milk is milk. And that finished. So she brought the milk, what uh, Sri Ramana asked. Milk is milk. So maybe Rupesh would get an answer. Yes. So I, I guess good. my I question to all the Bagans, yeah. my question to all the Bagans, are they willing to, to operate Goshalas and give protection to the cows? Not just the negative part, to criticism of what the cow, the carmies are doing to the cows, but they're willing to protect the cows and take the necessary steps and engage in actual cow protection. That is the question. Yes. I think also it's uh, Prabhupada, the, the finer tissues of the brain develop by which we can understand this transcendental science. Yes. So Vincott's made another very good point that they say cow milk shouldn't be consumed by humans. Completely wrong. But this is this goes on, everyone, in the form of what's called mental speculation and mental concoction. So we should try to avoid that and carry on with our Krishna conscious philosophy given by Srila Prabhupada as the absolute truth. So thank you, everyone. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Let's move forward with uh, uh, Kirtan. I have a 60s. question. How do we get into the program later on? Will there be a link? Or we just use the same link? That we uh, yes, Prabhu. It's the same link. And I'll also share it on... Well, I shared it by email already. And I'll share it on WhatsApp also. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Yashoda Prabhu, and all the devotees who have participated today in this very interesting program of the discussions of our philosophy for our benefit and ecstatic understanding of the good fortune that all of us have being disciples of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Hari Bo. Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vasadi Gaurata Bhunda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadha Sri Vashati Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Thank you.